I'm Dan Pierce, and this is Pressure Cooker. I said I will never wear the e-job or give up my mini skirts. Never. It's the outrageous story of two misfits living on the fringes and how they became the central players in a sprawling terror investigation. We just hung out and played video games and smoked weed and did what we do, you know. Pressure Cooker is available on the CBC Listen app or wherever you get your favorite podcasts. Coming up. The genealogy of DNA does not tell you exactly who it is. It, it develops a profile, and then you have to go through and go through different relatives. And it's almost, it's almost like a tree, and you're working your way back towards the trunk. For Vault Studios, I'm Will Johnson. You're listening to The Daily Crime. Last January, through the evidence and DNA testing, we identified the victim known as the rising fawn, Jane Doe, as Stacy Choharsky. Last week, investigators announced they'd solved the case of a woman who went missing back in 1988. Agents from FBI Atlanta, Detroit, and Baltimore field offices sought to identify Stacy's killer. It did not take long. The FBI, working with the Georgia Bureau of Investigation, used forensic genealogy to identify the victim and the suspect in the case. At least we can get some answers for Stacy's family and then go to bed knowing their daughter's killer, their loved one's killer, is not out there on the prowl anymore. And they finally can have some answers to questions that have been plaguing them for over 30 years. And maybe they can rest a little easier having answers to those questions. I, th- I think this kind of validates uh, that we're never going to give up. We are here as an advocate for each and every victim. It's important to prioritize your mental health and wellness every day. Because when you work on yourself, you'll start to see and feel positive changes in all areas of your life. The long-term effects of therapy can give you the tools to deal with challenges as they arise, strengthen your relationships, and give you a more optimistic outlook on life. There's no better time to invest in yourself than right now. And that's where Talkspace comes in. Talkspace can help with any specific challenges you might be facing, but also, you don't need to wait until something goes wrong in your life to work with a therapist. You can just do it now. Getting started is the most important part. And you've heard me say it before, Talkspace is the number one online therapy platform with thousands of licensed therapists trained in over 40 specialties, including anxiety, depression, relationships, and more. Your therapist can help you set and achieve your goals. As a listener of this podcast, you'll get $100 off your first month with Talkspace. To match with a licensed therapist today, go to Talkspace.com. Make sure to use the code DAILYCRIME, no spaces, to get $100 off your first month and show your support for the show. That's DAILYCRIME and Talkspace.com. I'm joined now by WXIA 11 Live reporter, Caitlin Ross. Caitlin, thanks for being here with us. Thank you for having me. Caitlin, let's go back to when this, this case really first begins, back in 1988, when a uh, a woman is reported missing, right? And then also a body is found not long after. But all of this comes together years later. But take us back to 1988 and what we knew back then. So in 1988 in Michigan, uh, Stacy Lynn Chahorsky goes missing. And she is reported missing in Michigan, And then in December of that year, a body, a Jane Doe, is found in Georgia. And at the time, the two were not linked at all. Stacy was missing. Her family had no idea where she was. And a Jane Doe was found dead on the side of the road. And no one knew who she was. Her DNA was entered into the National Missing Persons Database in 2005 and didn't get any hits. The case went to the Georgia Bureau of Investigation's cold case unit in 2015. That's when they started working with the FBI to create a forensic profile of the DNA. And then it wasn't until March of this year that that woman found dead on the side of the highway was finally identified as Stacey Lynn Chahorsky. What do we know about her and, and her background? So we know very little about her. We know that her family is still there. Her mother has been deeply involved since she's been identified in speaking with the GBI and in following through with bringing her daughter's body home. But in terms of who she was as a person, her parents, her family have not given many interviews about her. So what we have of her right now is a black and white photograph. It looks like it could be her high school yearbook photo where she's smiling back at the camera. It looks like the picture's been photocopied a couple of times. And that's really really all we know about her. Before we get into the investigation and the continuing investigation and the ultimate identification of a suspect in this case, 
let's talk about this this DNA that was, I mean, first and foremost, the fact that they held on to this DNA back in 1988, as with any of these cases, it's always just sort of uh, amazing. Well, yeah, and that's why this case is so miraculous from the jump, was that they did have the foresight to store that DNA, make sure it was stored carefully, preserve it, knowing that they found the DNA of who they expected to be the killer at the scene. They were able to preserve that DNA and preserve Stacey Lynn's DNA and make sure that it was entered into the system, I mean, years after her death. So it's pretty incredible that the investigators on this case continued to follow it so meticulously throughout the years. And that was earlier this year that she was identified. Her family was notified. She still has living family, is my understanding. And then the next announcement came not not that much later. Exactly. It was just a few months later that they announced that they used the forensic genealogy to trace back the killer's family. They were able to find a living relative of Haas Wise, and they tracked them down. That person was cooperative, offered a DNA sample, and they were able to match it and conclude that he was the killer. Genealogy DNA proves Henry Haas Weiss killed Stacy Jaharski. Weiss was a truck driver who drove through Dade County, Georgia on his regular route. Weiss had a criminal history in the Southeast, all of which predated mandatory DNA testing for felony crimes. What can you tell us about him? My understanding is that he is no longer alive. So he was a truck driver and a stunt car driver. He drove a truck all across the southeast in the 80s. His route carried him right through there. And what's sad about it is he was a convicted felon. He had a criminal record that this day and age, he would have had mandatory DNA on file. So he would have been identified much quicker. But his criminal record predated mandatory DNA testing. And so for years, 34 years almost, no one knew who he was. So when they finally finally were able to get that forensic genetic profile, they identified him by tracing that DNA back down the line and found that he was killed in a stunt driving accident in 1999. He burned to death. You mentioned, you know, we, d- we don't know a lot about the victim in this case. Has this investigation and the identification of a, of a killer uh, opened that door up at all in terms of, uh, of, of where she might have been or how they might have crossed paths? So they haven't said too much about that yet. They said they still don't have a motive in this case, and they wouldn't really walk us through how that forensic genetic profile came together. They did say that this was the first time in the country that this science has been used to find both the killer and the victim in the case. And they anticipate as this technology gets better and better and the availability of DNA is more widespread, they will make more arrests and identify more victims this way. But this time it really was something completely new. This is a case that's over three decades old now, and over the years, different investigators have been involved. And you spoke to one of the investigators on the case who's been a part of all of this identification, right, or, or, or several. But tell us about what that, that was like, just speaking with them and and hearing them talk about this case and, and having some resolution. It was really emotional for him. We spoke to Special Agent Joe Montgomery. He's with the Georgia Bureau of Investigation, and he's overseen this investigation since 2015. Before him, another agent had it since 2005. And he said, as an agent, you live with these cases. You're constantly looking for one little lead, one little thing you could run down that could possibly bring these families some relief. And so when he was able to identify Stacey Lynn and then tell her family she was finally at rest, he got choked up talking about it. He said it was a really emotional moment that after 33 years, this mother finally knows where her baby is, where she had gone, and her body was able to go back home. And even though he said there was a lot of frustration that the killer was not going to face criminal justice in this case, he said just knowing that the killer was not out there anymore brought Stacey Lynn's mom a lot of peace. I spoke with Stacey's mother last week to let her know that we found who the killer was. And uh, she, of course, got upset. But um, she was very thankful to everybody that I mentioned and um, was just I'm overwhelmed, and every time I talk to her, she gets overwhelmed, so, and understandably so. I mean, you lose your daughter 34 years ago, and you go through that emptiness of not knowing where she's at, and finally being able to say, you know, she's here, plus her body has gone back home, so.
Okay, the kids are already asking what's for dinner. But breaking news, empty fridge. That's okay. I'll Instacart. Let's add some organic asparagus and some farm-fresh chicken. Easy. Wait, is the oldest vegetarian this week, or was it gluten-free? Gluten-free pasta. Covered either way. Cart it. And finally, some vegetarian gluten-free olives for my well-earned cocktail. When your family's shopping list has more footnotes than groceries, the world is your cart. Visit instacart.com or download the app and get free delivery on your first order. Offer valid for a limited time. Minimum order $10. Delivery subject to availability. Additional terms apply. Officially one hour until your favorite show premieres. Time to get some snacks delivered through Instacart. Okay, let's get some popcorn, seltzer, chocolate-covered almonds, and... <gasps> Wait, did they release the whole season? Better cart some ice cream for the two-part finale. When your day should be ending but a new season is starting, the world is your cart. Visit instacart.com or download the app and get free delivery on your first order. Offer valid for a limited time. Minimum order $10. Additional terms apply. Really interesting aspects to this case. You mentioned forensic genealogy being used to identify the victim and the killer for the first time. And, you know, you've got a case where this is a, a young woman who is just 19 years old and she would have been 52 years old this year. Yeah, the math is kind of crazy to think about. It's been so long, nearly 34 years since she went missing. So the fact that this cold case was solved is pretty incredible and definitely speaks to the technological advances we've seen since she first went missing, but also to the dedication of the officers. You know, you hear cold case unit and you don't necessarily anticipate they're going to be making big solves like this. But when something this big comes through, the agent said he just shook his head and said, wow. When you look at these cases and you realize that, hey, there's something we can do here. So we find out we have enough evidence to make a DNA profile. You send it to the FBI lab to get a profile, and then it just sits and sits and sits. And you have no, no hits on it where you can go do further investigation. So when this finally comes through, it's just like, wow. I mean, it's just, it's literally overwhelming. One of the officials said during a press conference said something along the lines of, you know, if you, if you've committed an act like this, a murder, we, we can find you. And, and that's what always strikes me about these cases with, with forensic genealogy and all of the technological advancements that we, we talk about here on the show is that if someone is sitting around there some, somewhere and, and they've got something like this in their history, they've got to be nervous. They must be, because every year the technology advances even more, and they are able to identify people so much more specifically down to such minute details with such small samples of DNA left behind. So certainly they put it out there that they are continuing to chase this technology and make sure that they're utilizing it to the max capacity as law enforcement officials, because this is solving cases. You know, I, I, I think um, in this case, uh, it it's very tragic what happened, but it's very fulfilling to the men and women who uh, are in law enforcement and uh, had something to do with this case to find not only the identity of the victim, but the person responsible. Because, as I said before, we certainly are the voice of the victim, and we're, we are their advocate. And... Uh, I'm not going to say it makes the community or the citizens feel safer, but hopefully it makes them understand that we work tirelessly on their behalf uh, to solve every, every crime that uh, comes our way that we're responsible for solving. Caitlin Ross at WXIA 11 Alive in Atlanta. Thanks for talking to us. We appreciate it. Thank you for having me. Thanks for listening to The Daily Crime. If you haven't already, check out the newest podcast from Vault Studios. It's called Intent, the Tex McIver case, available wherever you listen to podcasts. For The Daily Crime, I'm Will Johnson.